Wild Underwater Adventures. We've come inland from Gladstone to check out what species inhabit the creeks around here. It's a very dry area and it's very rare that you'll come across much water in the creeks. But if you get really lucky, like we have today, we found some flowing water that's really clear and it has lots of signs of life. So let's get in there and have a look at what creatures are living in and around Gladstone. We've been driving around for quite a while and we finally found somewhere with a bit of water. All the creeks out here are basically empty at the moment, except we found one with some clear water and it looks like there's a lot of fish. So let's have a look and see what's living in this little creek. This shallow pool really surprised me. It was actually flowing relatively quickly. And from the moment I put my camera under the water, I was greeted by hundreds of hardy heads, which are the curious little golden black fish swimming in the mid water. They are most likely the speckled hardy head, although it's hard to say. Along with them are the Splendida rainbow fish which are much bigger and kind of diamond shaped. There are also some gudgeons near the bottom and another species in the background, which I will get to in a few minutes. There were also these interesting plants growing along the side, which I hadn't seen before. The hardy heads come in two varieties, both of which look very similar. One is called the speckled hardy head, and the other is the unspeckled hardy head. They like to eat microorganisms like rotifers, insects, and algae. The speckled variety is found from the Northern Territory to Southeast Queensland. They typically lay eggs in early spring and summer amongst the plants near the water's edge. They are such beautiful fish and one I am thrilled to encounter on this journey. Of course, we also have the Splendida rainbow fish, which I covered extensively in the last episode if you want to learn more about them. These ones are particularly beautiful and very active, which is great to see. I love seeing the scales sparkle when the sun hits them at just the right angle. They were just as interested in coming up and investigating my camera as I was in filming them. I was fortunate to film the hardy heads as they were rifling through the creek bed for food. A large school of them descended on the creek bed right in front of my camera. A sight that I was thrilled to be able to see. Although from the water's surface, it didn't look like anything was happening here. And it didn't look like it was going to be very clear. It didn't even look like it was flowing. But as you can see from under the surface, there is so much life in this little creek. And it's flowing pretty quickly. You can see the bits of debris just shooting through the water and the speed at which these fish move around. Everywhere I turned my camera, there were signs of life. And then of course, you will occasionally see a much larger stripy fish. This school of larger stripy fish are a native species. However, they aren't native to this area. The rivers they originate from are in Northern Australia and the Lake Erie Basin. Unfortunately, they have been introduced by humans 
Some from aquaculture farms and dam farms, others from individuals releasing them into Queensland and New South Wales waterways, where they adversely damage local fish populations and can easily take over from the gentle, slower moving fish that are native to those rivers. This fish, of course, is called the barred grunter. And the barred grunter eats small fish, algae, insects, crustaceans, plants, and snails. Growing up to a maximum size of 18 centimeters, they form loose groups and swim very quickly together, easily outcompeting other species for food. They are a beautiful fish, and it's not their fault they're so destructive. It's just a shame how irresponsible humans are to have allowed them to get into the waterways where they aren't native to. One day I would love to film them in a natural habitat, but they are very far away from where I live and I can't currently get there. This shallow creek right below the road turned out to be one of the most beautiful spots I have ever filmed in. And the next video will feature the rest of this unique area and the amazing creatures that call it home. I hope you enjoyed learning about these wonderful animals and the environment they live in. Until next time, keep it murky.